Thank you, John. Thank you, uh, thank you all for uh, uh, coming this morning. Um, I guess I guess I guess the the last folks cleared out of the uh, the dinner the dinner at 11 o'clock last night, but uh, maybe still an early morning. So I appreciate uh, having having the audience here here with me. Um, what what I want to do in the next hour, or actually uh, 45 minutes, um, is to is basically to give you a, a sense or a feeling for the security development life cycle. My, uh, the, I, I've talked to folks yesterday um, about, the, uh, about the conference, about the attendees, um, and about, about what people's interests are. And, and, you know, and, and the understanding I've gotten is that people here are going to have some familiarity with the, with the security development life cycle with the SDL. Uh, maybe maybe not having read the book as John has, but uh, but but a, an understanding of it. So I'm not going to go back and sort of recap things you already know. What I wanted want to want to do is give you a sense of sort of what we did, what we do, how we did it, uh, you know, what some of the dy dynamics were, and then my objective is to leave 10 minutes for questions before the five minutes for Dennis at at the end of the. Uh, at the end of the hour. So, uh, and, and, and I'll be around here most of today, so if, if, if you don't get a question to me during the, uh, dur during the, you know, the, the question slot that I allocate, um, you know, ca catch, me, catch me during the cor course of the rest of the day. If you can't do that, um, slipner at microsoft.com, um, and uh, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to respond to emails or, or you know, ask other folks about questions I don't know. Um, I want to say a word. Uh, I, J John sent me the link to the uh, OWASP website and the commercialization policy and the speaker agreement. I want to just say a word about what I'm, what I'm doing and not doing. Um, you know, we, we built the SDL at Microsoft. I'm going to talk about examples from Microsoft and how we do it uh, because that's, you know, that, that's, that's what I know mostly. Um, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'll, uh, I'll, give, you some, I'll give you some links to the, some stuff that we give away that you, can, uh, that you can download and use if you find it useful. Uh, but, uh, but definitely not, not a sales pitch. So what I want to do in too many slides um, and too, many, too little time is cover, uh, cover the topics shown on, uh, shown on this slide. Um, you know, some of the background, you know, why we felt we needed to do something about software and, and software security and security assurance. Um, how, we, um, how, we, how we sold the process, how we sold the, the security development lifecycle internal to Microsoft. I think that's, that's sort of interesting because people have asked me, you know, how do we get support in our organization to do something like that. I'm going to talk a bit about the SDL at Microsoft, just a very quick introduction uh, to, what, um, you know, to what the processes look like. Um, I want to talk about management, managing change um, and, and, uh, and, and the, uh, you know, the, the, book, the book, what it's good for, what it's not good for, um, how, we've, uh, how we've updated and adapted and how we continue to do that and then the, the role of automation. Um, I'm going to go fairly quickly through the actual description of the SDL um, using, using uh, something, something that we've made, again, made freely available from the website, the, uh, the simplified SDL, which is you know, sort of the generic process that we've, we've released with, in the hope that organizations that wanted to emulate the process could use, uh, could, could, could use it. Um, talk about objections to, to the SDL and some of our, you know, some of the things that, that we believe about, uh, about what we hear about it. And then, uh, and then if I have time, I'll go through some of the free resources we've made available and, and, and wrap for questions. So, um, so, uh, so how we got here. Um, what I tell people when I, when I talk, you know, in public often is that, uh, 
is that I was hired at Microsoft in 1999 to run the uh, Security Response Center, the organization that deals with externally discovered vulnerabilities in Microsoft products. And that when I was hired at Microsoft in 1999, I was 34 years old, okay? You have to, you have to look at, at me and think about how old that would make me now um, and what that, that security response experience would do. That's supposed to be a joke. Um, all right, not much of a joke. Um, but the reality is that I started working in, in uh, computer security um, in, in late 1970. So I'm closing in pretty fast on my 40th anniversary in the field. Uh, when, when I started doing that, um, we were worried about building time-sharing time systems that could protect uh, government information from hostile attackers with programming access. And we built, you know, we did demonstrations, we did, you know, what, would, what you'd call penetration tests. Now, you know, give me local access to a time-sharing system and I can actually, you know, and I can, I can gain uh, uh, supervisor mode or kernel mode control sorts of things that, that people do, that people still do. Um, and, and we built some, some mathematical models and some theories about how to build systems that would, um, um, that, that would resist those, at those attacks. Um, but back in those days, um, there weren't any real examples to convince people that the problem was real. Uh, what we saw was either no computer abuse at all or else uh, cases where insiders with, with authorized access abused their access. You know, a, a guy used to work for a competitor of mine in a later life who, uh, who, who used to say, you know, accounts receivable steals from accounts receivable and accounts payable steals from accounts payable and nobody would ever Nobody would ever take a, uh, take a system with sensitive information on it and connect it up to an open telephone line or network. Um, so, so that was the prevailing wisdom up through about the, 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 the mid-80s. And so security, very much a theoretical problem. You know, we, we came up with ideas where you could formally verify security, you know, build a software, prove it's secure, you're done forever. Um, Interesting that some of those ideas have come back. I was reading in the communication to the ACM on the plane over from, uh, from the U.S. About, about some folks who've actually proven, formally verified a microkernel uh, written, in, written in C uh, research group down in Australia. So things just come around. But in the 80s, that wasn't the time. And so, um, you know, people didn't build products. Projects were canceled. Um, you know, not much, not much interest, not much success. Until the internet, and, and the internet, as all of you know, changed the rules and, and, the, and the reality. Uh, you know, we started to see viruses, which, uh, you know, were sort of a special case of what we had defined as Trojan horses, some of the research in the early 70s. Um, we started to see information shared, we started to see the kinds of connections that people said wouldn't happen, you know, as, as you hooked your web, you know, your web server up to your com commerce back end or your accounting back end and to the internet on the outside and the barriers came down. You know, I, I worked in the 90s for a firewall company, you know, and, and we built this, you know, pretty, pretty flexible, powerful firewall product, um, you know, but, but basically, you know, everybody had to let it port 80 through and, you know, and everything rode over port 80. So, you know, that model wasn't, wasn't so, so great either. Um, by the mid-90s, of course, vulnerability research for reputation, um, and it was the vulnerability research that led to the security response processes and the security response center that I did, in fact, run for Microsoft from, from 1999 to 2003. Um, and so the first thing that we felt like we had to do was to say, okay, at least if people find problems in our software, we're going to fix them. And that's still not a bad thing. Uh, that's still not a bad thing to start with for an organization that doesn't have any security program at all. If somebody finds a hole and says, um, 
and you know and says your your software is vulnerable you need to be a, you need to answer the phone or, or answer the email and 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 be able to do something about that people ask you know what should we do to get started that's one of the things that we tell them um, we uh, we also something that's less well known created in 1999 something called the secure windows initiative and that was a group that was supposed to address tackle solve this problem of, of software of, of security assurance and and the way that was to be done um, you know this you know the the part about my being 42 years old was a joke this is actually serious we took three program managers Michael Howard was one of them and they were assigned to review all the components in Windows um, and file bugs for any of the security problems that I found and then the development organization of thousands of people would fix those bugs and then we'd have a secure product okay I mean that that was the initial approach that that Microsoft came up with came up with in uh, in in 1999 that evolved by 2001 to uh, to an approach of team training and what we call bug bashes to basically take a you know spend a morning training and then spend an afternoon uh, uh, doing code reviews or doing uh, doing testing finding finding security bugs uh, and and filing bugs to, to fix them and that was sort of the process when I took over the the security assurance role in uh, in mid 2001 and with that process of, of, of training and bug bashes and filing and fixing security bugs, uh, we thought we'd done better with Windows XP. And in mid-2001, I'm sure you, many of you probably remember this, we had Code Red um, in, in early August, we had, uh, we had NIMDA in September, and then we had something called the UPnP vulnerability, uh, which you know, didn't, didn't lead to a worm or, why, or, or exploitation, uh, but was a pretty bad vulnerability that was discovered in XP when it was like two or three months old. And so, you know, by that time, it was evident from what we were hearing with our custom, from, from our customers uh, that we had to do something. And the do something took the form of, of, uh, of Craig Mundy, uh, working, uh, who's one of our chief technology officers, working with Bill Gates to, to draft and, and send the, the trustworthy computing email that, um, that said basically, we're, you know, we're not going to allow this to continue. We're going to do what we have to to improve the security and privacy of our products. Um, that was, that was a, a super important thing for reasons I'll, I'll come back to. Um, in parallel with that, um, the, the team that I, I led at the time was trying to figure out, okay, is there anything we can do to, you know, to make some improvements relatively rapidly? Um, and what we came up with was the idea, well, we'll just stop all of Windows, not this business of, of take people offline for a morning for training and half day to file, file, file bugs but we'll take them, take them offline for a significant amount of time, train them, um, and then get them to do the things we know how to do at the time. And those were threat modeling, and I'll come back to that, uh, code review, um, running the tools we had, uh, conducting tests, and I'll come back to that, and, and, and changing the product to make it more secure by default. Um, we thought that that would be a relatively quick way to, to significant improvement. You know, some, some fun stories about that. I talked to the, uh, the program manager who was responsible for the release of Windows Server 2003, which is the Windows version we had on, on, under, under development at the time. And, and I, you know, and, and, and my, Michael Howard and I met with him, said we wanted to do this. And he said, well, I think we could arrange that, you know, probably fit it into the schedule. I'm thinking of a half day for training and a day and a half for the actual security push. Um, and we said, well, we were thinking of a little longer. And we wound up getting a commitment for a month 